Hey everybody, welcome to Cat's Creations live on Monday for a change. I thought that today I would take this opportunity to do a two for one type of a live, which means that this would have been the live that I would have done with my private group on Sunday, but Sunday was Easter and we didn't do Friday live because I spent that day just praying for a whole bunch of stuff. Um, and it seemed like Good Friday was the perfect opportunity to do that. So today I'm taking the design idea I had for Friday, which was going to be patriotic and combining it with the curl and weave method, which I'm going to show you today, which in my private group would be considered deco base method number six, which is probably the most advanced, um, like base method. Um, that you would want to learn. So it's the most challenging, it's the most difficult, it's the most time consuming. And so I'm gonna to try to give you some tips along the way of some things that you can do to make it easy. So, um, and there's a lot of people in my private group that have been here for a very long time who um, have not mastered the curling wave. Um, they get frustrated and they give up. So I'm hoping this will be a challenge to help you kind of get used to how to do it. So it does take a lot of deco mesh, but it's also another great way to use up 21 inch deco mesh you might have, like I do, left over that you need to cycle through and put into projects rather than doing a bubble or just the poof method. So I'm hoping this will help um, those of you kind of decrease your surplus stockpile. So do we have anyone joining us? Yeah, uh, we've got Kathy Sanawa, Gail, Sharon, Burkhard, Sandra, Karen, uh, Kelly, Renee, and Christina so far. So hi gals. Awesome. So couple housekeeping rules. One, this is a public group. So feel free to like and share the video. Liking and sharing, or not liking and sharing it. Sharing it to your homepage makes it easier for you to find it so that you don't have to dig through my stockpile of videos to try to find this particular deco mesh. And um, other housekeeping item, I, I like totally lost my train of thought there. Like and, like and share. We did like and share. Public group. And your private uh, group. Your private group. There was something different. Um, so private group, just real quick recap. If you want to join my private group, two ways of doing it. You can go to my Etsy shop and save about $24 and pay for the whole thing for the year up front. Or you can go and pay the $17 a month and go to my website which is Cats Creations and more, just like the apron, dot com. Scroll all the way to the bottom. At the very bottom, you'll find a link that um, you'll request to join the private group Facebook group. And then there's also a hyperlink in there for you to sign up to um, be on recurring monthly payment for that. So, and then you have access to my entire library, not just, you know, current stuff. Like I know some people just give them this, you get what you get as of today and everything in the past is the past. You don't get that. Um, we open up everything. So we're gonna go ahead and start. And I have already went ahead and pinned the catscreationsandmore.com. Oh, awesome. On the website. Okay, perfect. So we're doing this on the 14 inch Dollar Tree frame. We've kept the tutorials for deco mesh base method all on 14 inch Dollar Tree frame, all wired the exact same way to show you that you can use any one of those six methods that I've taught my private group and has shown you throughout the going on three years now in the public group how to make a deco mesh base using a Dollar Tree frame. So um, I'm just gonna finish wiring the last section. Oh, that's my housekeeping item. If you're new, let me know. We'd like to welcome you, hopefully get you plugged in to somebody who's close by that once COVID goes away you can hook up and become crafting buddies with and um, who knows where that'll go. So, um, Dollar Tree 14 inch wreath frame, six sections. You're going to, in each section, have two inner and two outer rings. So the two inner ones, and I'm just color coding them with my pipe cleaners because it makes it easier for you to see. We're gonna put our first pipe cleaner in the section on the two innermost rings and I use the wealth marks to help me kind of find a middle ground. And then to do the two outer two, we're gonna use the weld mark in that center pipe cleaner to help us determine where is middle ground for the two outer. So you'll have a grand total of six inner 
and 12 outer. So Renee uh, Farkas, a newbie from Warsaw, Missouri. Welcome, Renee. Welcome. Thanks for joining us. We're normally on Friday nights at 5 in the public group, so yep. we're just kind of pushing all this today so you guys can learn something new. And then Caitlin Craig said she's got that same exact mesh, so she's excited to see how you do it. Isn't this pretty? Okay, so let me push this stuff aside. Um, so, and I'll tell you as we're going through and picking up the product, exactly where I got it from. We're hoping to be able to use this sign tonight. Um, the two curl and weave methods that I've done in the past, I think I've done a 12 inch sign, but the one that I pulled up was an eight by 10 and it worked out perfect with a bow. So we're gonna try this 12 inch. You can get it at the race shop and craft outlet, I believe if they're still processing online orders. I got mine from Shinoda when we did our shopping spree with Gail when Gail was here. So we're going to try that. Um, you will need a grand total of 36, I know it sounds like a lot, 36 12 inch pieces um, of 21 inch deco mesh. So you're going to take your 21 inch deco mesh, you're going to measure out 12 inches and then you're going to take a wood burning tool and you're gonna wood burn all the way through. So for my combination, knowing that you're gonna weave these two different two different deco mesh colors um, in a weave and a curl kind of fashion, you need 18 of like one color and then 18 of another color you're gonna weave. So because I'm gonna weave blue and red, I split those so I have nine blue and nine red, so I'm gonna alternate every other one as we go all the way around. So any questions before? Uh, craft outlet, craft outlet for the navy blue metallic, and this was from Hobby Lobby. So it's the premium deco mesh at Christmas that Hobby Lobby had. So I think I've covered deco mesh. Any so you've questions? Got, you've got a, hi, I'm Lynetta, I am new. Hi. And just bought the private group on Etsy. I saw you so, got a just request to join the private group and I'll approve you as soon as we finish. Yep. So hi Lynetta, she's from Manteca, California. Welcome. Um, Stacy said, I never thought of color coding, I'm very clever. It, it just, it helps me to know which one goes where. Yep. Anything and then else? Connie said, I'm thrilled I found you last weekend. I was searching for a heart rag wreath and found you on YouTube. Oh, awesome. Awesome. I love it. We've got to do some more rag wreaths. Yeah, I think a lot of these gals, which is great to see some traffic. I think it came from when you did that live. Crafters. Crafters. Yeah. How many of you Crafters found me convention. from watching the whole wreath makers? Um, I think they had like a 21 designer type of marathon. It was last week. Not this last Saturday, but the Saturday before. So, um, what you're gonna do, like I said, 12 inch pieces cut down. I am going to start with the inside. Normally I do the outside if we're doing a um, work frame. So we're just gonna do it this way so it's easier for you to see the inner ones. Normally, like I said, I start outside. So I just kind of push those ones down out of the way. So what you're gonna wanna do is you're gonna take your 21 inch deco mesh and you're going to roll it almost like you're doing curls so and it doesn't have to be even and sometimes like when you do it this way if you were to try to bend this you kind of get a funky bend like it almost folds so if you take it and you kind of do a little twist then when you go to bend it it doesn't fold in half it actually kind of follows the follows roll. the spiral follows the spiral right yeah. So I am going to take this and you are going to create a little loop like this with your two tails on either end and you're going to kind of make an awareness ribbon out of it like this. This is what it's going to look like when it actually sits into the pipe cleaner. And don't worry about like the little end sticking out, it'll all go together. So you want to have about three inches from where this is gonna go into the pipe cleaner. So three inch ends, and then um, however you wanna make your, your loop. Mm -hmm. So you're just gonna start, you can pick anywhere on your inside. So we're just gonna start right here with the red. And Mary, if you don't have a wood burning tool, just go ahead and use your regular rotary cutter. 
Um, on a 21 inch, I would highly recommend on this method that you use a wood burning tool. Walmart yeah. carries them. You can get them off of Amazon, um, Hobby Lobby, Joann's. Um, I don't think Target has them, just wherever you could. Um, I think even Lowe's and Home Depot, mm -hmm. they have the soldering iron, but you can get mm -hmm. the the chisel point mm -hmm. for the soldering iron, yeah. or it's kind of like a whole kit. Soldering, yeah, I mean, they do make kits that are like wood burning tools, it's a soldering kit, and they usually have that chisel. Right, I'm just trying to think point. creatively outside of the box now with yeah. COVID, mm -hmm. um, closing down everything. So, then, this is um, what it's gonna look like when we yeah, start. Too. And then Susan Thompson, yeah, just uh, PM Cats, is it hi of anyone? I'm in a private group. Mm -hmm. But did not know about paying for the year up front. Can I switch? Yes, from you month? can. So yeah, yeah yes, you, you can. can. I just had somebody do that this morning because you actually save a little bit. So um, this blue, mm -hmm. even though it's from Craftel, it's a little bit thinner. So you can see it's very pliable, very pliable. So again, we're going to do the same thing. We rolled it into about what's that like? An inch, inch and a half, maybe two inches. That's about so, an inch and a half. Yeah. yeah, it depends. Don't worry about the ends. So this is where you're gonna take your end and you're gonna go through the loop. So you're gonna go through the loop you already made, just like so, and you're gonna get your three inches, and then this is where you're gonna go into the next pipe cleaner, just like this. So they're actually connecting. I will. So we went, we started on one, we took our secondary color and we went to the next pipe cleaner. Next on the inside rail. Right? On so the inside. Going inside, inside. I'm only working inside, not the outside right now. Okay? Yep. All right, now we have to go back in and we need to add another red, white, and blue. So we're kind of toggling red, white, and blue with the, um, the blue and then the red. So you guys might need to jump in and remind me if I space and I totally forget. So we're going to do this. We've got our three inch. Yeah, Mary uh, Miguel Fresh said, hi from Ohio, I watched you on the craft show. Oh, awesome. Thank you. Okay, so now this is where it kind of gets a little tricky. You're going to take this one and you're going to put it in the exact same spot. Am I right? Yes. This is like a part of me that I have to actually learn. So yes, this goes in the exact same loop as the blue. So we're gonna kind of angle it to the side because we're kind of getting it prepped for the next one. And we're gonna go right, you're gonna have to really stretch your pipe cleaners. And then you kind of wanna fan out your ends, your ends so that it kind of goes red, white, and blue, blue, red, white, and blue, blue. Don't worry about that, because remember we have the whole bottom layer to work on. So this is gonna be okay for now. Now we have to pick up the red. So red, back to, and this works out really well if you have leftover deco mesh and you wanna split them. Um, so I'm gonna do the same thing. Here's my deco mesh, kind of spiraled, kind of twisted it a little bit so that it makes a really nice twist. I think people struggle with a curl and weave if they don't twist their deco mesh and they just try to keep everything lined up like a curl. Mm -hmm. So this one is going to go back through our red, white, and blue. We've got our so two that's inch where tails. Weaving it through the other curl. And then it goes into the next pipe cleaner. So it goes right in here. And it gets ready for the next one. So it's like the. Red and blue are gonna lean to the right mm -hmm. on my side, and then the red, white, and blue are leaning to the left. It's kind of like a uh, braid. It is. It look, and I trust, trust me, you guys are gonna look at this and go, this is hideously ugly. Like by the time you finish, you're like, I don't see where this is going, but okay. Hang in there. Until you're done, yeah. Right, so back there. And so what do you guys think the red, white, and blue is gonna go? <clears throat> Is it going to go to our next pipe cleaner, or is it going to go in the same pipe cleaner with the red? I'll let them answer. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Though I'll probably have it done. Kayla, no, you never have to untie the one before to layer. You just add it right to the top. Yep, just sandwich it on there. So, <clears throat> this one goes right on top of the red. 
It goes exactly like what we've done with the blue. So we're gonna lean it to the left. We are going to really get in here with our pipe cleaners and again, kind of open that up. And then this way, <laughs> the way that we have it, it's red, white, and blue, blue, red, white, and blue, blue. See, and then it goes red, white, and blue, red, red, white, and blue, red. And then this is all set up for our very next one. Kevin said, I can tell I'm gonna need a bottle of wine while attempting to do mine. <laughs> Maybe. I don't know, I think I need a clear head to be able to, to figure that out. So just take your time. Just remember that in every pipe cleaner, you're gonna put two, but initially when you start it, you're just gonna put it in one, and then you're gonna link it and put it in the next one, and then you're gonna put one on top, then go to the next. Then you're gonna do the two. You'll kinda get the hang. I wish I could say, and thanks to the magic of TV, we've already done this. Cha-ching, yeah. Right? Ta-da. Ta-da, no, we didn't. So back here, we're gonna go through the red, white, and blue. And this is the reason why I separated the colors too is because it helps, like if I just did all red, white, and blue colors, this would be a little confusing for you guys joining. You'd be like, what the heck did she just do? So you can see that in every single weave, um, there is um, the colors, the solid colors are going through the red, white, and blue. So you know you're doing it right if you've got them linked. Mm -hmm. So each one is linked to the next one. Although in between, there's no linking. And then um, Stella said earlier, can you do this on an 18 inch wreath form? You probably can. You can, I just don't know how big it'll get. Yeah. And that's the thing that I'm always concerned with is because from a wreath perspective, I mean, if you were doing it for yourself and you're not shipping or you're just going to do local sales, then by all means, you can go as big as you want. <clears throat> But for us shipping, that's a little too big to ship. You know, I think, I don't know what the, the overall finished dimension should be because we're using 21 inch and not 10 inch. So we'll see by the time we finish where it all winds up. So this is gonna go again back on top of the blue. So leaning to the left, making sure everything's spaced out and don't worry about the spaces Mm -hmm. in between because remember we've got the whole lower row, rail that we've got to work on so you're looking at this going I can see I can see <clears throat> mm, that's mm -hmm. where we're gonna have the lower curls yep so and Renee now, I believe there is a video on this uh, in YouTube quite a while ago but because we're in the public group we will put this on YouTube uh, later tonight or tomorrow yeah I think the one that I did the most recent one um, it's the red truck Christmas wreath. So it has the home for the holidays red truck is the one that I did the curl and weave on. So again, going back through. And if it gets stuck, just kind of coax it. And then we take our solid colors and the solid go to the next pipe cleaner. The red, white, and blue will always go on top of your solid if you choose to do solid. So you can see it's really filling the base in the middle. Mm -hmm. Look, I've only gotten four sections done and it's really beefing up the inside. Yeah. Like it's creating a really good base. So now we're back to red, white, and blue. Hi, Peggy. Kachina, yes, this will be on YouTube later tonight or tomorrow, which is also I can at least watch 10 times. Yes. <laughs> yes, right? I yes, I attempted this a couple weeks ago and guess where it ended up? I know, in the trash. That you're gonna do it. Because you didn't have wine. Gail? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I don't, I don't no. I'm just kidding. I don't think she, I don't know if you drank wine. I couldn't see you doing this slightly, slightly, um, with an alcohol uh, mellowizer, I guess. Mm -hmm. So, again, leaning to the left, and then we're gonna go with our blue. What do you guys think of the color blends so far? Do you think they work well together? Yeah, well, yeah. Um, I wish I would have had a higher foil blue. Marilyn asked, why do you do the inner ones first? I think on this one you have to do the inner ones first, right? I do the inner ones first because it's easier for you to see what I'm doing rather than me start on the outside ones. I started on the outside ones first when we did the home for the holidays 
and people were like, I don't see how you're going to go ahead and do the inner ones. So it was a little difficult, more difficult for them to see. So well, I think you have to do the inner ones first, because then you once you switch over to the outside, it has to transition right over. No, 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 okay. no. Okay, so we are right where we're at. And it's funny because I look at this and I go, does that sound seem right? Because I got blue and blue, but I still have these two ties. So back to red and blue. Mm -hmm. And so this does, I mean, if you have a lot of 21 inch mesh that you're like, I don't know what to do with this 21 inch mesh. I'm tired of doing poofs. Um, some of the colors I have don't really look good bubbled. This would be a good mix. So let me redo this one. I don't like the way the ends looked. So sometimes just curl them a little tighter. I think you said the blue really sparkles on camera. Does it? I'm glad. Mm -hmm. Okay, so here's this. So back right on top. And we are going to really tighten those down. Christina said love the colors. I don't know. Um, I mean, I was trying to think, okay, what, what colors would look good? What theme wreath would really look good with this one? Um, so I just figured, oh, patriotic, I think, because we're, we're moving into that holiday. Antoinette asked how your hand is doing. It's getting better. I have a flexi. I had, I've been using the metal, the one with the metal bar in it. Yeah. Um, so... And I've only been limiting myself to 10 masks a day. So I've just found that was more reasonable than trying to do 35 in a day. That just pretty much killed it for me. So I have to get back to making wreaths. And I think that if you use, and this is where I was saying, use the good quality mesh because if you don't, and this is the only time we're gonna take um, red and add the red on top of the blue because we can't really add it underneath unless I could probably undo it. Let's undo this one. Try to hold this because I want the look to be consistent. So I'm going to hold these two together, push these ones down, push these ones on top, and let's see what it looks like to try to give it the appearance that the red was underneath. It isn't really what we need. Red, white, and blue to this side. And there we go. So, isn't that pretty? Looks like a whole bunch of knots on a wreath frame, right? <laughs> but we're gonna fix that. So this is just what it looks like with the six inner. And you're probably thinking, hmm, what if you just did like every other one? Do you really need to do double that? Yeah, you do. Because what this is gonna do is, like I said, it creates a really good base for our sign. So that's basically what we've done is we filled in the inside. And so now we're gonna work the outside. There's no jump down, there's no trick to getting to the bottom one. So you're just gonna pick wherever you wanna start and you're gonna begin the process all over again. So. Marguerite said having a hard time getting 21 inch white mesh Anyone have yeah. any idea who or what would ship to Canada? Isn't Craft Atlas so ships to Canada, don't they? You can try. I don't <clears> know. <throat> now with COVID, everything's changed. Like what worked before um, may not no longer work. So I would try looking through Amazon. Like go to the Canada version of the Amazon and see if you can try a 21 inch mesh there. Um, I think a lot of us have gotten really creative in where we're getting our supplies now with supplies being so limited. Um, so I would check there first. So I just started with my curl at the bottom. Again, leaning, leaning to the left. And then I'm <coughs> just gonna start with, I did blue here, blue's right here. Let's, let's pick red. Cause right underneath this is the blue. So I'm going to go opposite. And Nissy says, it drives me crazy not being able to make wreaths on my crafting items or in storage. Oh no. So I'm hoping you're able to get them out of storage soon and start crafting again. I have a feeling things are going to go back to normal here fairly soon. 
I don't know. I don't have an exact date. I was telling Steve we should just have a, like a giant giveaway and have people participate when they think things will somewhat go back to normal. Um, mm -hmm. That might be fun. Do you like a wreath or wreath box kind of so thing? So now you're starting right on the outside. Mm hmm So just like what I did at the top, oh. I started my red, white, and blue. I linked it with the red. And remember, I'm not going to go directly on top of this one. When you start, you're going to go to the very next pipe cleaner, leaving your three inch tails. And you're going to go right to the next one. And remember, you want to tie it pretty tight because you got to come back in there and add another 21 inch right on top of that. So it doesn't have to be like a perfect curl. It just needs to be an awareness ribbon. So this goes on top of our solid color, leaning to the left. And really wrench it in there. This is why I was telling you I kind of needed my, my hand strength to be at 100% mm -hmm. to do this because you have to put double, not only are you twisting and holding it, but you've got to wrench your um, pipe cleaner down. So now we're going to go back in with our blue. It actually creates quite an interesting effect when you're done. When you're done. That's awesome, Beth. You said working on a patriotic wreath while watching you. What are you making? What method are you doing? Are you just doing like 10 inch? So we're going to twist. You're going to feed it through your loop. Yep, and using the same pipe cleaner. Yep. Well, these, the red and the red, white, and blue are together. When you link it to your red, white, and blue, this is going to go to the next pipe cleaner. Right. So, not in the same pipe cleaner. Right, but then when you do the red, white, and blue, it's going to go Red, white, and blue always blue. goes yeah. back to the same. Sometimes you have to pick up the tails from the one that was there before, like the top ones, tails now are kind of in the way. So what they will do is the tails were actually, remember how like when we did the inside and we had those gaps, like where you could totally see, that's where the tails from the top are actually gonna pop in and fill those spaces now on the bottom for us. So we've added our blue. <clears throat> and Shell asked, where do you get your sign at? Uh, I got mine at Shinoda, but you can get them through the Reese Shop or Craft Ella yep. if they are still processing online orders. Yep, same sign. Same exact sign. Yep. It's just a 12 inch round. And it should be, I want to say right around seven or eight bucks for the sign. So we're back to our white and blue. This goes on top of the blue we just put in. And welcome, Shell. She said first time we're here as well. So let us know what city and state you're from. Absolutely. So that when we're out of quarantine. Right. Right. These are all going to be historical lives because we can actually say we lived through a time when um, everything shut down. Everything so. shut down, and people be like, "No, seriously, yeah, we are living history right now." <clears throat> so now we're back to red. Sandy so said, I use the same red, white, and blue mesh on a wreath for Memorial Day. Awesome, Sandy. I like the, the red, white, and blue. I like the one I did here because I think it was a little darker. Uh, yeah, it's a different pattern on that one. Mm -hmm. But I find that if you use the high foil, it's a, it, number one, it doesn't fray. It's kind of nice together. The blue is a little thinner, but like I said, they both came from Craft Outlet. And so Sandra said, do you ever use any six inch deco mesh? I have a ton on hand. <laughs> we'll have to save that for another time. Far back in the day when I didn't know any better. Right. Yeah, those are good for like candy cane wreaths and- uh, um, The ones that have shapes. Shapes, right, like shapes. stars, stuff like that, yeah. Oh yeah, the awareness ribbons are really good for that. So I took my red, leaned it, so here's that upper bubble. So I'm gonna kind of bring those two 
the middle of my other bubble. Let me get rid of this one. Steve LeMay is on. She said, I just got that sign at the wreath shop. Hop to Steve. Steve and Steve. Too many of us. Right. And Michelle said she's from Tennessee, so. Oh, okay. Awesome. What? I'm like, Tennessee is long. So, um, <laughs> closer to the east side or the west side of Tennessee. Because I think we have quite a few people in that, that neck of the woods. Yeah. So Sheridan, we added the hi, red. Sheridan. Hi, Mary. So if your hi, bottom Jason. starts to look a little cone-ish, like the bottom of a tornado, like really super big, just kind of reel that back in. And now this is gonna go back on top of our white, white, and blue. And get it squished in, and then separate your tails. And I'm just kind of readjusting my spirals as I need to. I'm trying to keep my pipe cleaners out where I can find them. I think that's going to be key. And then we need blue. Blue, blue, blue. I'm still, uh, and it's funny because I look at my, my deck of mesh, I'm like, I only have like four. This is five pieces of blue. I'm like, uh, we still have a long way to go because look at all the red, white, and blue. Yeah, guess I can't wait for this nightmare, nightmare to be over with us too. I know. I know. I know Gail and I talked today. <clears throat> Maybe about planning a trip to Hawaii at Christmas. I think I can get medication and knock me out long we're gonna, enough. We're gonna Christmas with a crank it? Yeah, Christmas with a crank it. <laughs> Never know. Need something after all this. Okay, so. We have to go find our pipe cleaner and get our link to the next available pipe cleaner on the bottom. Oh, hi, Alix. She said I didn't realize I was signed into my iWiz account. <laughs> She's like, oops. Okay. Sharon, we're talking about COVID. What about? <laughs> the nightmare of COVID to be over with. Although Gail did have a nightmare with Crow and Weed. Yes, she did. But this isn't, like I said, it's not and it's not one that I do an awful lot. And it's not because I don't like the way, like, like oh, I just don't really like the way it looks. It's, it takes a long time. So as you can see, it's like every time my mesh wants to undo, I just keep retwisting it to try to find that happy place where it'll stay in a loop and not like kind of open up. So we're leaning it to the left, fanning out our colors at the bottom, and now we're back to red. Right now I look at it and I go, it just looks like a bunch of noodles. Noodles going everywhere. You can't say, I really want the nightmare of homeschooling to be over with. Oh, come on now. I homeschooled for... Yeah, like 12 years. Yeah. Well, <laughs> Kaylee graduated early, so it was but only Caitlin 11. Eh, Caitlin only went. She did homeschool for like a year and a half, and then she was like, I'm done. I want to go back to school. So now all these parents know what homeschool parents have to deal with. Okay, so we're back in a new open space. So I'm trying to get my pipe cleaner around my red and just readjusting. And then we need red, white, and blue. Oh, that's awesome, Karen. I'm gonna take this off. She said I just replied to Margarita. She just went to Lake County Treasure site. Mm -hmm. It's a site uh, up in Canada. Okay. And they have 21 inch iridescent white deck mesh for $10.99 a roll and they're out Ontario, Canada. So Good job. Margarita should be able to get them from there. Hopefully they're online. Way to go for sure. Well, she said, yeah, went to their site. So yeah, she got it online. Good deal. Okay, so I'm looking. I have to, sometimes you get confused when you're like, okay, am I up on the bottom? I am tying into the red. So you're always trying to find that one that you need to tie into. Because your top starts to feel like it's 
bleeding over on the bottom. Her week said, it, yeah, you pronounced my name right. Well, that's because we watched you. We watched her live, and we're like, <laughs> oh my god, she never told us we were pronouncing it wrong for, like, forever. So, yes, now we understand how to do it. Oh, sure, Ruth. She said, would you please show the wreath on the door before you finish? That's the bubble technique. The bubble wreath. Yeah. That would be method number four. Right? Yeah. Yep. That was our first 21 inch. It's probably the easiest method to do a 21 inch mesh. But you always want to make sure you have a really nice design. So something with a lot of stripes or a lot of bands in color. If you just do it with um plain colors, it doesn't it doesn't come out as nice as you would like. So now we're going down to the bottom. Here's our blue. Doesn't it just look like a mess of needles? Like, is there really a rhyme and a reason to that? Because that just looks like hmm. There will be once you put the sign in. Yeah. Yep. <clears throat> Because the outside chrome weaves start to take shape of, uh, they go. <clears throat> they start to arch up. Yeah, and the inside ones kind of form like a little well. Yeah, they lay the base. So this one's going to go on top of our blue, leaning to the left. So as long as you have like the three inch tails, then you're all set. And then just keep your pipe cleaners like keep pulling your pipe cleaners out to the front. That way when you're ready to add whatever embellishment you're going to put on the outside, they're easier to find. The inside six we're not going to use. So I could have just um, went through and tied those down really good and sniffed them off. It's one of those things where you're like, hmm, probably should have done that before we started the bottom. So because those of you will be watching this before you attempt it, once you do your inner six, twist them a couple of times and then snip them off because then you won't need them anymore. So we're getting our red. And it's okay if you see when you guys try this, if your 21 inch kind of gets a little fold and it, you can just kind of un, unfold it or, or uncurl it like Kat did if she was pulling it through. Yeah. You just kind of play with it until yeah. it, it passes through. And then you can go ahead and just re readjust your little loops. So like Steve says, now what you're starting to see, and you can spin these until either A, they go one direction or the other. This is forming more of a loop. So the inside ones are now coming up and the inner ones are kind of laying down so it kind of forms like a little pit a little plate kind of yeah exactly so now we have red white and blue on top of our red and we're slowly making our way around so you can see why you would need a heavier duty deco mesh like the red white and blue it's mm -hmm. a lot thicker than um, the blue is very very thin so this goes on top of our red. Hey Judy, no problem. Micah said this is so pretty, I'll have to watch the replay. This will be posted on her Cats Creations group after this is done. Mm -hmm. It'll automatically post it, and like I said, we'll, we'll post it on YouTube later tonight or tomorrow. And anything that frays, or I have a little piece like I see it right here, we're gonna come in and just kind of trim those up as you see them. And now we have our blue. So I'm gonna start pushing it that way. And she'll go back in and, sh and reshape some of these curls. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. It's get the form down, get everything done, and then... Um, Patty, the, um, the size of the bubbles on the wreath on the door are still 10 inches mm -hmm. for the bubble. They're still 10 inches. Yep. So now I've got to come in and find my one from before. So I've got to go find, sometimes you just have to move the inner tails out and push them to the middle. And then just remember, try to get a really good tie on the first one. So when you come in to add your red, white, and blue, 
see what you're seeing right here, all those fillers? Those are your tails from your inside. Those are now starting to play into the bottom. Mm -hmm. So it's really filling that wreath up really good. And I'll probably see this a bunch. <clears throat> but you can see how much I'm actually really playing with the cut edges. Not that I want to, but until I get it all formed. And then you won't touch it yeah. again. Patty said, love it, so pretty, high in net. Um, yep. There we go. So remember if it folds, um, just readjust your, your loops. And then this is going on top of our blue to make way for our red. Two. And red. We're slowly getting there. I know it seems like a lot of work, um, but it really, it, by the time it's done, it's going to look kind of cool. Some of you are probably already going, mm, no, I'm done. But from a wreath maker's perspective, to be able to do this method, you know, it's, it's one of those progress charts where you're like, yeah, I can do that method. You might prefer not to do it because it's a lot of work, but um, I think it turns out really good. Well, I'm sorry to hear that, Shelly. Your husband sh should always support what you want to do. She says, I love that you have a very supportive husband. Mine isn't supportive of all, at all, of my hobby at all, much less trying to buy quality wreath craft supplies. Oh, but keep in mind that most of the time our quality wreath supplies actually cost less than if going to... Um, Hobby Lobby Joann's or Michael's because believe it or not unless you're going with stuff like this that has a lot of bands a lot of high foil you can get a really good deal on um, your deco mesh or ribbon a lot better than you can in the stores yep. so that's why it's good to find a crafting buddy that you can kind of you know, maybe you don't order a whole $69 to qualify for free shipping. Maybe you only do 30 and then you have a buddy that um, can do the other 30 and then you guys both win. And if you don't have a crafting buddy, get one. Are you putting <laughs> Toy Story now? Yeah. Of course. Okay. All right. So now we're doing blue. We're slowly Teresa, going. Teresa, no. This is not a wreath for beginners. It's really not. Unless you can really focus and watch the video and stop it and frame by frame and, and redo it. Yeah. So that's why it's good to do two colors. Like maybe do one that has a pattern. Like I picked my red, white, and blue. That uh, was my pattern. And then a solid. And you can just pick a solid, solid. Like I think when I did the Christmas one, I did red, white, and green. And then I think I just did, I might have just done white because I had so much uh, red, white, and, or red, white, and green going on mm -hmm. that I just picked the more, like this one has a lot of white. This is probably the hardest uh, wreath to make as far the as the, mesh the face? method. That's why we called it the, the hard, yeah, yeah, this is like advanced wreath making. So this is going on top of our blue. So the first couple times I did this, I messed up so bad. I was like thinking every other one just went to the next one without realizing I'm like, okay, but where do they link? So I had to go back a couple times and pull them out. So mm -hmm. what you're seeing happening is like, as I'm kind of getting, see, here's my top. So when I go to put my red in, I'm going to skip this inner, wherever it is, wherever my, Hot cleaner is right here. Right there, yeah. So I'm gonna pick this one up. Okay, that'll be my red. And then when I go to grab my white, see we're really coming down to the last one. Yeah. The middle, the stuff from your middle just fills those gaps. So there is no gaps in anywhere you look on the reef. And I kind of forgot where it was. Okay, wait. <laughs> I did red. Red. So. Guess it. Maybe I need to come back for a one-on-one. -on -one. Right? On your way to Hawaii. Maybe. Vincent, I like the wreath method, but I won't be doing it. You did a great job. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. 
I understand it's not for everyone. Okay, so this one is gonna go into my red. Oh, I was like, wait, I need a blue. But yeah, my blue fell between my cart and the cabinet. I was like, didn't oh. see the blue. So here, see what I'm saying? How it's elevated now? Mm -hmm. Can't really see it, I think, from the screen, but here you can see the bottom is bit. here. Yeah. It's like a little pit, which looks really good when. Once you put the sign in. Well, if you're doing a sign, yeah, number one, this is going to create an awesome frame for your sign. But um, if you have a smaller sign, you can put your bow there and you can put your smaller sign off to the side. And it kind of, it, it kind of makes it, gives it a home. So this is going on top of my red. And you can always tell if you forget. So you're looking, mm -hmm. you're looking, if you find a solid color with no red, white, and blue on it, then this is where your red, white, and blue is gonna go. Cause I was like, ooh, I turned that and it picked it up. I'm like, where did I leave off? Teresa said, I've watched Cat do this several times and I'm not really ready to tackle it, yet one day I will, it's lovely and different. Yeah. And then, Caitlin Craig said, I won't lie, I'm a little afraid. Oh. Well, like I said, if you want, try. The only way I can say it's going to really work is if you get good quality mesh. Because this stuff is like the thin, but this is craft outlet. So um, that's why I went with the red, white, and blue that was a thicker method. And if you want, if you have a thinner mesh, cut them longer than 12 inches so you can make it a little bit thicker and then go ahead and um push those you know create ear loops on thinner mesh so this is going to go right to my red white and blue and this will finish our inner and i'm going to separate and put my blues in between and now we have a bunch of knots of deco mesh on a wreath frame. At least that's what it looks like. Yep. When you just look at it like this, you're like, that's supposed to be pretty? But yeah, it will be, trust me. <laughs> but that's, this is the look you're going for. So if you have this look and you've got this far and you're like, wow, that looks just like a bunch of messy weaving your deco mesh around, that's exactly what it's called, the curl and weave. Um, let me go ahead and go in and I'm gonna remove my inner ties really quick. So remember, if you're doing this on your own and watching a replay, take the six inners out. And be patient. Yeah, just have patience. Remember, color goes through the print. And then the print goes on top of the color. Just gonna make sure that these don't come off. So I like to give them another three or four twists. Ellie said, I can't wait to try it. Timber said, this looks beautiful but hard. Hi from North <laughs> Carolina. It looks harder than it is. Like Steve says, just have patience. Yeah. Don't be in a hurry to finish. And remember, if you're, you're, your tubes fold, just you know, twist just them. twist them a little bit to where maybe you put too much twist in them and now they're folding because they're too tight. So loosen it up a little bit. And do ahead one more. Yeah, so she normally can do on a different type of uh, technique, she can normally knock out the other techniques within about a half an hour. This one took her about an extra 15 to 16 minutes to go through it and weave it all. And then I'm just trimming up any little funky stray pieces that are, I don't know, I just, I'm picky about the phrase. Even though I did this with a wood cutting tool, I just want to make sure that everything, you know, kind of looks the way that it's supposed to. And then I'm going to make sure that all my pipe cleaners are pulled out to the outside. So this is where having that uh, red, white, and blue is going to pay off. Margarita said, I think I'll get confused on who goes in the same pipe cleaner. <laughs> right? Well, who's on first? 
right? So this is where you have like red and then white so that you know you didn't skip one, you're just alternating your red and white. Okay, so now we're good. All right. So <clears throat> looking at the sign, this is where I'm saying if it's really nice inside all your loops. this like so. So it creates a pocket for it to sit in. So that is our pocket. Yep. So I'm going to go ahead and add my blue pipe cleaners and then just wire this directly to the frame. Just like so. Linda, no, she used the wood burning tool. Yeah, it doesn't seem like it did because I was playing with it so much twisting it and rolling it and then stuffing it and then fluffing it. So I'm going, I think I'm going to do it this way. I think right here, because I have that funky piece of mesh that yeah. is just not It'll wanting to cooperate. It's a rebel. Um, I'm going to put my bow there. So I just moved my sign around to where I'm not really going to impact much of the words on my sign. And it's really nice because you can look right down and see your frame. So just make sure you pull all your loops out. Right into my frame. As soon as I find my other pipe cleaner. And I can hear it. It actually helps when you actually hit the wire and not just in the same spot. So I'm like, why can I not twist these and they're twisting tight? It's because there's nothing there. So see, it's got a nice little pocket to go in. Looks cool, right? What's wrong? There's a section where it was right in front of you where there's like a little bit of a gap. Where? R right by where the two S's are in glass. Here? Gap right there. Mm. It came out of my pipe cleaner. This is why making sure everything is twisted down. So, when in doubt, twist an extra time. One, two, three. Sorry, Mrs. I have a habit of pulling my sign too tight into my wreath. Yeah, a lot of people do. Cat used to do it too. And, and it's, it depends on the look you want sometimes if you want it to be indented or not. But yeah, you gotta not put it in so tight. Okay, I have all my curls. There we go. So when in doubt, just make sure you've got a color, a color, a color, <clears throat> a color, a color, and they're all out. So, and here's our blue. It's just a little snug. Okay. So there we go. All done? Yep. Okay. Everything look okay? Yep. Okay. So um, I want to add a small bow. I always say small, but it ends up turning into some big, huge, large bow. But the nice thing about this is you can actually kind of have it off to the side. Um, so let's, we are going to use, I think these are all the colors I pulled. So. This is Home of the Brave. It says America. Uh, this came from Shinoda. The red with the blue and white stars came from Michaels. The, I think it's another Land of the Free, Home of the Brave. It's just a bunch of words, craft outlet. The checkered on a diagonal craft outlet. Um, this came from, I'm trying to think because it's not on here. I believe this comes from Craft Outlet or the Reshop because I took the sticker off. And then um, the blue with the red, white, and blue stars also from Craft Outlet. So we're gonna start with... Mm. Um, there was a cat that was beautiful. I will watch this again tomorrow and try this method, thank you. I'm gonna start with the red. <clears throat> Teresa said I was double checking a wreath I sold this weekend. And there were three ties coming undone. Thankful I checked. Yes, I always go through and quality control check everything. 
So. Hey Karen. She said, hey Alice, I'm so late today. No problem. No, you're not. Everyone's always right on time. So I'm going to look. I know my tails kind of come off to the side, so they're going to be over in here. So I always look at tail length and figure the first one's always going to be the longest. So I'm going to do 10 inch tails. And then it's going to be using Bodabra. And so it's always going to be about the twist. So right at that 10 inch where I was pinching, you're just going to twist it so that you have wrong side fabric facing you, right side fabric as you bring it around comes back up and then you just keep twisting. So these are going to be five and a half inch loops for this one with 10 inch tails. So I'm pretty, like I keep, you'll see me constantly double checking. All I do is I put my Bodabra, the center, right on this 10. And then when I go to pull my loops out, I can make sure that they're five and a half inches on both sides. And then also that my tail is 10 inches long. And then dovetail. Bring your wired edges together. And you're gonna cut from the folded side, sorry folded side to the point. If you cut the other way, you're gonna get a point instead of like the little split tail, dovetail, duck tail, whatever they wanna call it. That's what it would be. And now we're gonna come back in with the patriotic ribbon, doing the same thing. We will dovetail, it just looks nicer. But you can do a diagonal tail and this is going to be nine and a half inches, so it's nice because then the word America stays the way that it should. And then we'll bring this back over. And this is going to be a five inch loop. So I just bring it back, make sure it hits my five inch mark. And bring this back up. Do another five inch, double check, and then nine and a half inch tail. Right about here. I have the way that they rolled this ribbon, it's like the very top part where the wire is folded. Hmm. So I'm having to unfold it. And, and you could do that one too, where you did all the lettering the same direction, remember? Yeah, but because this one's going to kind of sit sideways, I'm not really going to worry about like making sure that the letters and the words all... Um, like I would do that, I think, more if I was doing the top, so that the words are all the right way. The only way that you're seeing it is this is right way, this is right way, this is right way. It's this loop that's upside down, yeah. but I'm going to have other ribbons stacked. So I'm kind of okay with that one right now. And then, let me look really quick. I think, I think I'm gonna do it like that. So I always usually play with my ribbon and look at the colors of how they would stack, mm -hmm. but I think it needs to have um, some blue brought in. So I just gotta cut off that little folded part that's always the brand new part of your ribbon. Because no matter how well you try to unfold it, the crease remains. And then this is going to be nine inches. And then this will be four and a half inch tails. So they won't roll away. And you can even do it on your 15. I just find it's easier to do it if I keep it on the fives. I love the, the fact when you're doing your live, <clears throat> other gals are helping answer other people's questions. Oh, I because love it. Because that margarita, uh, we, you know, was still trying to find that white 21 speckle mesh. Yes. And um, a couple of gals, um, Teresa Wilson says, believe it or not, Unique in the Creek is up in Canada. And oh. They, and they have a Canada, Canadian site, and it looks like they sell Deco Yeah. Nice. Yep. See, I like that. That's what a community is. Yeah. Everyone yeah. helping everybody else. 
Margarita, she uses a two and a half inch on the bottom, usually probably two of them, right? Yeah. And then she's using four on the top. This would be my cat though, because, well, I do it all the same every single time. It's always two, two and a half inch, on four, one and a half inch as they stack. And then it always starts with 10 inch tails, nine and a half, then like the tails nine. go, yeah. 10, 9 and a half, 9, 8 and a half, 8 and 7 and a half, and that's where it ends. And then the two beginning inch and a half um, loops are always 4 and a half inches. So this one's going 8 and a half. So this is nice. It kind of looks like a picnic, right? Picnic ribbon. Yeah. And because this and the blue are the same, if you put your fingers through both and pull, they're gonna both be the exact same size without having to measure that. Cause my blue was already measured to the four and a half inch. But I need to make sure my tail comes back to eight and a half. And then we just- still shorten them up as needed once you've done. Yeah, I'll show you. We'll fluff it on the board. So you're kind of getting a bow making tutorial as well. To make sure I keep all my pins. Oh, that's to awesome, Julie. Well, thank you for showing up, even though your electricity went out. What? She's all made it. Electricity just came back on. Wow. Thank you for Storms? tuning in. Storms. Uh, sounds like it. Probably all the rain that we had the last five days out here in California are starting yeah. to hit you guys um, yep. in the Midwest now. So this is eight-inch tail. And then I'm going to do a four inch loop. <clears throat> so there's my four twist. And I don't ask me why I twist it and move my bow dabber around. A, it keeps my ribbon from tangling. And it was just some weird thing I started doing. And I've kept on doing it ever since. Because people have asked me, why do you twist? Why do you move your bow dabber around? It's easier to move the bodabra than the ribbon. Yeah. And that's done. And usually when I'm finishing my bow, I look for something with a pattern. Like if we're doing solid colors, I will generally never finish with a solid on top. I prefer it to have a pattern. In this case, the mm -hmm. words. So I could have gone with any of the four that I picked. I was going red, white, blue, mm -hmm. red, kind of white, blue. I didn't really plan on that. That's just how it came out. So these are seven and a half tails. And then these will be three and a half inch loops. So just a little bit. Bringing it in just like a natural bow wood. The top's going to be your shorters. And then back to seven and a half. And then we'll dovetail those. And then like Steve says, if I need to shorten any of them because they're hanging over the sign or they just don't look right, we can trim them down. But it's a really good base for that. At least said we had huge storms here in North Carolina last night. 4 a.m. ripped the flag pole off our house. Wow. wow. And then Linda, how many ribbons do you use on all your bows? Are they all the same? Not always, but most of the time they're... They're six. They're six. Yeah. Two, two and a half on the bottom and then four inch and a half on the top. Yeah. So that's my, my claim to fame. That's the cat bow. Because <laughs> it's always the same. The lengths are always the same. The widths are always the same. Yeah. The way I stack them is pretty much always the same. So there's that. So now, fluff box it. Yeah, I have it right here. Fluff board. Yep, look, I pulled it out. So, 18 by 24 inch cutting board. If you can't find an inexpensive 18 by 24 inch cutting board, go to Lowe's or Home Depot and have them just cut a 18 by 24 inch piece of plywood. plywood. Three quarter inch. Three quarter inch, or you can go an inch. Sand down the sides. Yep. Yeah, and then if you want, you can stain it, you can mark it, you can put whatever you want on it. And I just have a C hook in the middle. I have a nail here if I want to use it like 
For the Provo. For the Provo if we have our wire. Mm -hmm. um, but with this, it's just pipe cleaner. And then right here where um, we have our stack, I'm just gonna take this and I'm going to loop it as soon as I can loop it. But that's what I'm doing, putting it underneath the pipe cleaner so that it, it's holding it. So if I show it to you like this, can you zoom in? Yep. Okay. So yeah, you can just want right through the pipe, wait, right through the pipe cleaner. So I prefer to turn it this way so that it's long. And then we're going to start at one end or the other, it doesn't matter. So here we're taking our tail and our loop on this side. And then here on the opposite side, you're going to take your loop and your tail and you're going to make them go directly opposite. So tails here, loops here. And then when we do this side, because we started with our tail here and our loop on this side, you're going to go opposite. So you're going to have your loop here and your tail here. Same on the other side. We are going to take the white and pull it here and this loop because then it goes like red, white, and blue or red, white, red, white and it continues that pattern all the way around. Then we're going to do the next one. So we're following the red. So we're going to do it here. Margarita said uh, we're so blessed that you give us budget friendly advice. I love budget friendly advice. <laughs> you know, it's what In other works. words, it's free. It's budget friendly. So there we go. And so here we're following the white. So we're going to pull them opposite. There's that. We're going completely opposite on the other side. And if at any point you want to change out the order, like maybe there's too much red stacking up here and you want to pull blue, switch it. Just remember when you come to the other side, go opposite so that your loops and your tails are completely opposite of each other. And then here, we're following our blue. So over here, we're doing the same. And then finally, we are going, trying to get him to cooperate. And then you make all the adjustments you want. So I can pull on these fairly well. Just don't pull too hard because you'll start to pull one through the other. But you want to open up all your loops. And then if you want to put the little curls back on your tails, pretend your fingers are scissors and this is curling ribbon. So as you do it, just kind of put some tension on it. And then you can pull these and you put all the curl back into your ribbon so that it's kind of like burnt. It's a little hard to do at the very bottom one, but it still works. But you want to make sure your loops are open and your tails are where they need to go. So let me show you this. Oh, thank you, Jane. She said, I tell all my friends you're the best teacher. Easy to follow your instructions. <laughs> I hope so. Let me know if I'm if it's confusing and I can readjust. So there's our bow. It's all ready for our wreath. So now we just need to take it off the board, which is the exact same way we put it on. Always fun. Yeah, it's actually pretty easy. You just take your finger and push it off the hook. So we can take this. But you try not to squish the bow. The bow. I try. <laughs> if it needs to be readjusted, it needs to be readjusted. So wow, Sharon, we're glad you're okay. She said, we just had a tornado hit here this morning before 8 a.m. Did a tremendous amount of damage about a mile down the street. Well, thankfully, not where you're at. Yeah. Okay, so when you're looking at your bow, I look for an empty space. Because that's going to be the side that's going to hit my sign. Because I don't want tails hanging all over the front. So I think this general area right here is pretty, like, tail-friendly, like it's free. So we can look at it. Kind of decide. And I'm trying to get my tails. Jesse, uh, yeah, Margarita was checked, trying to find a place in Canada that sells deco mesh because 
Uh, a lot of times American um, websites, they won't sell to Canada because of the shipping. So it's yes. harder for margarita and gals up in Canada to, to buy uh, products in America right. because of the shipping. So they try to keep it in Canada, which I get. So I think I'm going to do it like that. What do you think? Mm. Does it look okay? Yeah. Okay. Don't want to pull it too hard. Oh, you got, it's like way on the... It's off side. to the side. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I want it off to the side, otherwise it's going to be right in the middle of our sign. So this is just an accent piece. So I just kind of have this here. I don't want it to impede the words of my sign. That's why I kind of pushed it more off to the side. It's kind of sitting on, it's like in one of these nooks and crannies so that where I had that one that just would not really cooperate, um, we put a bow on it and just made it look much prettier. So there's that. I'm just pulling all these around and let's open that loop. Okay, so now we need to embellish the outside a little bit. So, super simple things. You guys are normally seeing me do tails and half bows. We're just gonna do tails for right now. So I'm alternating the home of the brave and the red. So I'm pulling the two and a half inch back down. Cause right now it's nice, but it's kind of like you have all these awareness ribbons, but kind of nothing to fill. So we are going to fill that space. So I'm gonna take the red and I'm gonna put the red where the red is, our red ties. These are cut to 13 inches. So I have six red and then six white because that's the 12 outside. And we don't wanna twist them all the way yet. But the nice thing about these little pockets is it allows your ribbons to sit inside those little grooves. So I'm gonna make sure that my words stay correct. I'm just gonna rotate it and bring it on down. So I just do like a twist and a half or two twists. Mm -hmm. So no, you'll see. No problem, Christy or Patricia, don't worry about it. You said they're both late coming in. We'll post this afterwards so you can rewatch it. Absolutely. As soon as this ends, it goes right into replay mode. So we're back to our red. So sometimes, again, this is where your ribbon can help remind you, oh, hey, you need to do, you know, red here or white here. It just looks nice on the wreath too. Because when you look at the back, it's red and white. So, and we're almost done. So bear with me. Wish I could tie faster and fluff faster. I'm trying to fluff and tie at the same time. <laughs> I'm like squish them in. So I fold them in half to figure out where middle is. And then I just pinch them. And so many people worry about how wrinkled it is in the middle. Like they're trying to get that smooth. You want that wrinkled look. Cause that shows that it's, it's a ribbon. It has an anchor point in there. So if you have any holes, now your ribbon really helps cover any imperfections. Well, thank you, Jesse. She said she just checked and they do sell to Canada. Yeah, they might sell to Canada, Jesse, but they charge a lot more in shipping. So most places do. And Margarita I think Canada will have to check. That. I think Canada knows that though. Yeah. Like I know, like for chocolate couture, it's always more expensive for customers in Canada yeah. to ship. So we're even putting one. Hey Debbie. My cousin, oh. my cousin Debbie's on. Hi Debbie. Debbie, thank you so much for going up and helping Jane move mom. That was awesome. Love you for that. So we're pulling these back under. What do you guys think of the colors so far? Do you think the colors work well that um, we've picked? Or I picked Steve supports because yeah, those look good together. <laughs> right? 
Margarita, the pinch is where Cat folds it in half, so the pinch is always in the half of where the tail is. So that's where she puts into the pipe cleaner, if you get that. Yeah, watch. Um, let me get to where we're on the other side, so let me get under the bow real quick. i got to work under these ones, so red. Ring. It's just hard sometimes getting way under the bow. Yeah. But it's nice because then it it kind of gives it an extra fullness with a lot of extra tails and color. As you see as we come around. And I'll show you with the um the white might be easier to see. Or maybe the red. Let me put this one in and I'll show you. Okay, so we're gonna try this this way. Okay, so here's the red. I fold it in half to find middle. And then right where my line is, I'm going to pinch it just like this. And then right inside here, I'm going to take my ribbon just like this. And I'm going to Secure it. Use the existing pipe cleaner. The existing pipe cleaner. And then I'm going to pull them so they kind of like... Form an A. Yeah, yeah, kind of an A. Upside down B. Right. So that the tails radiate out. It just elongates the wreath a little bit. Makes it just a little... Looks a little bit longer. And then here's the last one. And then there's a ton of stuff you can do you can leave your um, pipe cleaners on there if you want it. Like shorten them, you can put your little glitter balls or fillers on there if you want to add those for a little bit of extra sparkle. I'm gonna take it a little bit different today. And we're doing flex tubing. Because a lot of you have flex tubing, but we never ever really work with it. So I have red, blue, and red, white, and blue. So you can get this from Dollar Tree as Memorial Day gets closer. You can order it from Craft Outlet or the Reef Shop. And they usually just throw it on the floor behind me. And we have yards and yards and yards of it. I need to get rid of it. <laughs> I keep, like, I buy it and then I'm like, oh, I should have used that. And I didn't. So I'm going to try doing the three. And I'm just going to, these are usually two inch tails. So literally two inches, and then I just make a double bow, just like that, two inch tails, and then I'm going to take this and put this right on top because it reminds me of the loops we did all the way through the wreath. And then I'm just going to, you could still put glitter balls on it if you want. I am just cutting those off. So this kind of ties that, the loopy thing, back into our wreath a little bit more. <laughs> I'm not supposed to not drop You have to hold them on your yeah, pinch them against the counter. Yeah. yeah, you do the <laughs> lean, right? Or open up your drawer and just kind of have them sitting in there. So, same thing. You just start getting really good standard loops on these you could go every other one and put ribbon in them you could do half bows you can do double bows on it so once i cut my pipe cleaner off i just bend my tail down and i tuck it back into the the wreath and so i have more curlies it's a wreath term, right? Yep. yep. <clears throat> so, and um, it's almost like my loops are two inches too from where I'm pinching and to the edge of the loop. They're probably like four inch pieces. You can just eyeball it wherever it feels good. Then cut those off. 
and then just spin them around. What do you guys think? Do you think that's a good touch? Yeah. Because we've used so much deco mesh. What do you guys think? Get lots of loves, likes. Is there any questions you guys have about any process that well, we've done? Margaret just asked, do you normally do one bow on a wreath? Not necessarily. Sometimes she'll do two, yeah. sometimes she'll do three. I just thought that this, because the materials cost, like we've already used three rolls of 21 inch deco mesh, and granted we didn't use all of it, but we've carved into it, so A, we can't use those for a bubble. They have to just be, um, you know, used for um, another curl and weave, because you've already spliced into it. Mm -hmm. So you're not gonna get that full length out of it. So there we go. Oh, that's right. Um, Jenny has a good idea. She says, I use the bud dabber to hold the tubing. Just use the bud dabber. Oh, yeah, I could, huh? Right. Instead of just like pushing. Jenny, you're awesome. I guess the way to the camera, that's so true. <laughs> the bud dabber is oh, like. Oh, Cindy too said, I use my bud dabber to hold the end of the tubing. They both said at the same time. Oh. These gals are awesome. Wow, in three years, I've never thought of using that for that reason. <laughs> okay. Thank you for the tip. I am indebted Grab to the you. Yeah, I should, right? So this is what they're saying. Like you can go for it. Do your loops. Do your loops. Do your tails. See, but for me it's just one extra step, I guess, to put it there. You could just pull it enough to where you could do it round with Bodabra and then cut it right before. They probably are doing it a totally different way. Like, that's not what we're doing. We're pulling it through. Okay. Okay. So, I just thought that it was a good, a good substitute instead of doing half bows with tails. Because if I had people go, is that all you do? No, that's just kind of like a standby, I guess. See, I'm still doing that thing. I just lean. <laughs> just lean. I just think it needs a lot of sparkle. I mean, you could go way crazy with this mm -hmm. in so many different directions. But overall, do you think you guys saw it from the beginning when it looked like noodles on a wreath? Did it exceed your expectations of what it would look like at the very end? Did you think it would look like this? Now when you see these loops, you'll know what somebody did in order to achieve that. So if you're ever wandering around on Pinterest or a customer sends you a pin like this on Pinterest, you now know what they did to create that. It was just a curling weave. Sharon said, love the tubing on there. I'm trying to get it under my bow. Margarita said, something I'm willing to try. She said she was going to try and red, a red and white one because she's up in Canada. Oh, that would be really pretty. Do you have like a sign? Like a Maple leaf would be pretty. Yeah, well. exactly. That's exactly what I was thinking. Spinning. We're almost done. I just dropped my ribbon again. And sadly, from what I'm seeing, is Dollar Tree's flex tubing is not the same as it has been in the past. So. If you see them on the D-Star sites and you know those are like the packages from last year, snatch them because the quality and what you get, the diameter of your tubing is so much better um, than what they're putting in the packages now. Yeah. You're getting a lot less. It's way smaller in the diameter of the tube. But two more and then we're done. Yeah, Kat said maybe it'd be easier to just do do colors for the first one. Jenny oh. said the wreath is looking awesome. 
It's so funny though, the first time we did it, I think at Christmas we did a lot of um, where we had the ties, we did um, pine cones and we did um, the ribbon, but instead of the flex tubing, we did pine cones and pine, pine burrows, mm -hmm. metal bells. So it's very rustic. So it just kind of creates a presentation side for you. Yeah. You're almost done. I know. I have one more to go. I was like, woo, I salvaged. I mean, I still have a ton of red. This is sitting on the floor. Caitlin said uh, Dollar Tree was putting out 4th of July stuff today. They had a ton, a lot of really cute stuff. She got a ton. Did awesome. you find tubing? Was tubing there? I know that's the And stuff. did it look okay? or? I noticed that when I got the Christmas, was it Christmas this year? It was disappointing. And I even mentioned that to Jean because Jean works at Dollar Tree. I'm like, what the heck happened to Dollar Tree's quality? Mm -hmm. And she's like, I know. Margarita said, not confident enough yet for customers yet. Yeah, but as long as you're learning a new technique, it's now you can just make it for yourself or friends or family. Okay, well, we are done. Let me kind of push that off to the side so I don't yeah. step on it. And let me show you what it looks like on the door. You can put the bubble wreath on the counter here so people can see it. Yeah. So, just so you guys can see, let me, um, while you guys are getting, while Steve's doing that shot, let me, um, really quick tie my bow. Wow, it's just being stubborn. And then I can show you what the back looks like. So I'm just twisting my sign ties, which is all stuff I usually do at the end. But this is so you can see what it looks like on the back. And I got one more tie to get rid of. Okay, so they hadn't unboxed it yet, but the backing boxes were there. Uh, Elise said the Easter tube when you bought at Dollar Tree was awful, tons of kinks. That's yes, what we noticed. that's yeah. what I noticed too. And people were like, well, it's only a dollar, just cut that off. And I'm like, ugh. Yeah. I'm oh, Jean's on. She said, uh, yeah, it comes from China and many items are decreasing in size to maintain the dollar price. So, there's the back. So, there's all those loops, sorry, that we did at yep. the very beginning. Those are all now where our sign sits. Mm -hmm. So, you don't have to look at the back of the sign. And then there's our front. So, we'll take this one down. So, let me put this one up. So you can see, oh, let me do this really quick. 26 inches is the diameter on this, and it's probably going to be 7 inches. Could you fit it in a 24? Oh, yeah, it can fit it in a 24. As long as it doesn't go past 26. So you can fit it in 24 by 24 by 6. So there you go. So just make sure everything's all nice and pretty and our loops are all done. What do you think? There you go. Did we get good? Sure, so thanks for doing this live. I was having a little wreath withdrawal. <laughs> sorry. I promise. We'll, we're back on to a normal schedule. Right? Yep. We're hoping. Okay. And then here's the bubble one. So if you... This is in the private group, but you can look up. I have other tutorials. I think I did a Halloween and a Christmas one. Mm -hmm. Same theory. It's just a 10 inch Dollar Tree wreath frame. 14 inch. Oh yeah, sorry. With um, <laughs> And I did red, white, and blue, just so it looks pretty on the back. And then they're just 10 inch um, bubbles. bubbles. Yeah, so there's five bubbles per each section. So it will take one complete roll of 21 inch deco mesh. They also beautiful, love it, really beautiful, it's just awesome. Cool. Okay, Friday, we're doing military wreath. So join me Friday at 5 if you're not normally used to following me. Friday is normally my designated time spot. So 5 o'clock Pacific, 7 Central, 8 p.m. Eastern. And we're going to do military wreath. So I haven't figured out what branch of service. And last comment. Um what? Kathy said, um, beautiful, how can I sign up for the private group? So oh, 
two ways. So if you want to pay for it all up front, save $24, you can go to my Etsy shop, which is etsy.com forward slash shop forward slash castration 777 or just search for me at castration 777 you'll find the private group. Or if you want to do $17 a month, you can go to Catscreations and more. I need a dot com. Which I pinned. It's pinned at the bottom of the it's pinned um, at the bottom of the post. Scroll all the way to the bottom. There's a fuzz. Um, and then you'll see there's a link, a blue hyperlink that says see more. Click on that and that'll open up the link to sign up for the reoccurring monthly payment. Mm -hmm. And then um, you'll request to join the Facebook group. So I'll just, once you do those and I get confirmation, I just go and approve you and then you're in and then you'll get like this wreath. You'll get all the materials lists for this wreath, all the SKU numbers for all the mesh, all the ribbon, all the sign, everything is, you can print it out and just use it to shop mm -hmm. from. So I think that's it. Yep. Other than that, I hope to see you guys on Friday and hang in there. I think the, it's, it's going to be over soon. Yep. We're hoping, right? We're hoping. We're hoping. All right, everyone, thank you for joining me on a Monday. Have a great night, and I'll talk to you on Friday. Bye-bye.